All right, let's talk about sample-based synthesis. Um, if you refer back to wavetable synthesis, um, try to understand sample-based synthesis the same as wavetable synthesis, but from sampled sounds. And that can be anything. A basic example is a violin note, okay? I mean, and then that is the, uh, you know, a, a waveform, just like when you're looking at wavetable synthesis. Now, you might add another sampled waveform on top of that, you know, like you're doing wavetable synthesis, but only with sampled sounds. So that's the basic understanding of that. Try to keep it that simple in your head. Let's take a little closer look at it. Okay, so first of all, um, I'm going to try to keep this real basic as some of the other videos we might get a little more complex into some of the issues. But first of all, let's take some basic sounds. First of all, you got like a drum, a drum sampler here. So you've got some basic, you know, You've captured some basic um, drum hits, you know, that are sampled sound in wave files that you can just drag in here. Now, the cool thing about that, looking at like wavetable synthesis, is you can start overlaying them on top of each other. So that not only can you do that, but you can add waveforms on top of it. Um, you can add other sounds on top of it onto those drums to help shape them. And not only that, is that, you know, that's the basic concept of it. So I'm trying to at first deal with it like you know wavetable synthesis that's the same basic concept but with sample sounds any sampled sound that you can get on the internet and get down or you can record and then make samples of them you know i mean you you can you can do that with anything and drums you know drums are a prime example of that and being able to layer different sounds on top of the drums or different drum sounds to lay to come up with some really unique or really well, you know, some tonally, tonally and harmonically, you know, you know, awesome drum sounds, you know, and and that's the basic concept of it. We're not really going to address what all you can do with them at that point, but just that basic concept. And a simple sampler, you can do the same thing with. You have either, you know, you have like, you know, a, a vocalist, you know, you saying ah. You know, anything like that that you can record and then save as, you know, a wave file and then drag it into the sampler. And it doesn't have to be that, you know, it doesn't have to even be that. You can take like you've got a, a short, you know, repetitive, um, you know, two note, three note, four note, five note part or anything that you've recorded and be able to drag it into the sampler to have it repeat on notes. Does that make sense? And, you know, you can sometimes have issues in ranges because it'll start sounding like Donald Duck or, you know, you know, it'll, you know, I mean, it might sound good for a certain range, but the sampler thing for some sounds, it'll sound good for any range. So it's a really cool tool and, you know, using it like wavetable synthesis. Um, the other thing we wanted to talk about is, you know, samplers that are dealing with sound fonts, you know, sound fonts. Um, if you want to understand a little bit more the, about a sound font, there's a real cool one. There's one that's called Polyphone, and you can see that here. And it's if you download that, it's free to download, and you can experiment around with it and read about it some to understand more about what a sound font is. Now, so you can understand a little bit better what's going on inside of your sampler. Because basically, like this basic sound font here, as it's got, you know, you look at all the different sound fonts that I'm showing you here, for all these different instruments and basically what it is is each one of these that you can drag into your sampler and it's set up let's say that that sitar right so they recorded uh they recorded a sample at this note 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 and then they mapped them in a sound font so that they'll reproduce on the keyboard the same way does that make sense and the cool thing about that is that, you know, using it like wavetable synthesis is that initial sitar sound that you can overlay other sounds, other waveforms on top of it to sculpt that sound differently. Does that make sense? And the applications of that are endless um, to create sampled sounds that, you know, just the basic first steps, you know, like wavetable synthesis, being able to create some really wild sounds. And, you know, another level of that is being able to do that in your studio, meaning you've taken, let's say you've got, a, you know, an audio track here and you've recorded some sounds or you've drugged some sounds in there. Now, you doing sound sculpting on them in the studio, if you go back and watch all those videos I did on sound sculpting, sound sculpting them any way you want and then dragging another wave file on top of it 
and or, or down below it on another track sound sculpting that the way you want and then overlay on the, on top of it in this studio that basically you've got like you know you can sit there and you know put um it's got play overlaps to where that you can go on top of it and when you press play overlaps if you overlay two sound files on top of each other wave files that they'll play them both together does that make sense instead of one of them cutting the other one off and then you can bounce them together you know i mean you know render them together as a wave file you know after you've sculpted on both of them separately and then you know i mean in any type of sound that you want so you know that sampler is a is you know that's the aspect of looking at it like of what you can do the things you can do to sound sculpt the sound and then you know use them like wavetable synthesis that they're all you know just like you know those basic waveforms and being able to combine them in any way that you want and layer them on top of each other and you know get a little bit better understanding of that i do suggest you download like polyphone and you know there's another one here that's called vienna v-i-e-n-a and it'll give you a basic construct of that and you can create your own sound fonts for your samplers you know and you can do all kinds of cool stuff that's just you know awesome but that's just a basic look at it we didn't really get into all the things you can do with those samplers because that's the basic concept and then after you get done doing that then you're starting to do some type of synthesis to that sound but that basic you know that basic you know concept um to build really complex waveforms that you know that you're going to use just like wavetable synthesis um on samplers is just an awesome idea and that's the basic concept of using it so let's see what else all right the next thing we're going to talk about is granular synthesis you know that's um, basically granular synthesis works on the same principle as sampling synthesis that we just got done talking about um, the deal with that is that it can be a little complex because um, this actual sample is split into small pieces of like between 1 and 50 milliseconds and they're called grains and basically you can layer multiple grains on top of each other of that sound and have them play at different speeds phases volumes frequencies and whatever other parameters that synthesizer might provide so i mean it's the basically same concept that we just talked about but it's it's actually taking that sample and splitting it up so you can do some of the synthesis synthesis techniques that we've been talking to um to those small pieces and then trying to layer them on top of each other or delay them or i mean all kinds of different things um granular synthesis can be very uh, it's a very unique synthesis that can be um and it can have a lot of purposes but it's a very experimental synthesis unless you have a very specific need that you think you want to do something because of with those type of parameters um as a as a tool that it can be very experimental to where you just start pulling apart sounds and seeing what can ha what happens <laughs> you know what's going to happen here when i start you know doing all this stuff to it and the best thing to, um, to d as far as that type of synthesis is you know to basically read about it a little bit because i mean it it can be kind of complex and i don't want to get into it too much because it can be a very much experimental synthesis for doing very unique sounds you know like if you're really into sa creating sounds that are very unique that you know um for certain applications you know that you might be working in that to come up with some really unique sound that's never going to you know happen any other way that i do suggest you look into them a little bit and maybe you know um peruse around maybe find a couple free ones to download and look at and you know and or if you've got the money buy you know a decent one and just kind of experiment around it because it's really an experimental tool myself so far um most of the time when i'm using this synthesis and synthesizers that i it, i'm i want to have a very specific purpose you know for what i'm doing and i'm trying to do something or create something or sculpt something and a lot of times it's just not experimental I, i'm not going to just sit there all night long seeing if i can create some weird sound so you know i mean if you're into that you know there you're going to do some really cool stuff and you know i'm going to back up a step on that and maybe eat my chew there a little bit because sometimes you can you can take samples and you can start overlaying them and doing some of the things you can do with the synthesizer that can be really cool 
So, you know, I'm not going to get into what all that does and all the different ones and, and all the different things that they will do. Because some of that can be very complex. And it's a very much an ex it's been around a while. But, you know, it's most of the time not what I'm thinking of when I'm thinking of basic, basic synthesizer that we're trying to talk about with the basic parameters that we're trying to discuss. So I, che I suggest you check into it a little bit and read about it a little further and, 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 you know, maybe get one, you know, or a cheap one or, you know, middle of the road one and experiment around a little bit, see what it does. Um, now that by the time we get done with this, this tutorial, you should have a pretty good understanding of what the synthesizer is going to do and what, you know, what, how you might want to broaden that experimental part of you and for what purposes and, and how much that might be pertinent to something you might be doing at that point and then investigate it a little bit farther so i think so far we've adjusted we've addressed most of the basic parameters of what a synthesizer is um, some of those lines can get kind of fuzzy so what we're going to do next is you know we're going to go into them and, and just you know talk about them a little bit um i'm it's not going to be real technical and real specific but we're just going to pull out a couple cents we're going to mess around a little bit and, uh, and talk about the parameters on the synthesizers, some of the parameters and things they can do in samplers and, and, and things like that. And we're just going to talk a little bit and hopefully that within a video or two that we've addressed most of the issues that are happening on the synthesizer that may be different on synthesizers or you may have more oscillators or less oscillators or more LFOs or whatever kind of parameters there might be. We're going to try to address most of them from actually looking at the instrument about what they're what they're supposed to do and what they can do for you and then we may talk a little bit about some things you might be able to do with them um, so i hope you enjoyed the series so far and the basic outline of the synthesizers and we're off to the next video peace hope love